Ribble Radio. 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 Ribble We've got music and fun. Yes, looking forward to that. Two hours, solid two hours. There's no gaps. There's nothing. There'll There's be no, no dead air. air. There will be adverts sometimes. There'll be adverts, yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, that that's what's what pays our wages, isn't it, really? Certainly, certainly. And some of the adverts, I think, are quite amusing. <laughs> yes. No, I um, think the ones that you're on. Yeah. Uh, we've got um, our hip-hop challenge. We've got Song for the Lover, Song for the Ladies. Yep. We've got a film review. So Magnificent. Just, Had yeah. any calls about that, Rick? Any, maybe Channel 5 or someone onto you? No, they haven't, no. That's no, strange, that's no, weird. No, but uh, it, it's, I think it's a, a bit of a head of its time, because it's very unique. Sure, Because it's sure. not like other film, yeah. is it? It's sort of like, yeah. it's a yeah. bit... A bit out there. Yeah, Anything you caught your eye uh, this well, week, Steve? Rick, I uh, I know you that both you and I uh, are kind of obsessed with these people who believe in you know people who can predict the future or yeah. have got to contact with the dead or whatever. Yeah. And uh, I know Mystic Meg's a bit of a nonsense, but people do take her seriously. On the cover of the Sun today, Mystic Meg won me fifteen million quid. Wow! Right, you're thinking that's not that's a pretty amazing claim. I know that Carl believes in Mystic Meg and all that sort of rubbish. You know, you're thinking, wow, here at last is proof that she has got powers. And you wonder to yourself, well, maybe she predicted the numbers specifically, you know, that's, just, that would be a hell of a... Uh, just to him. Yeah, which is incredible, which is absolutely yeah. incredible. And so there's this guy, uh, lottery mad Tom Naylor, he's a, a lorry driver, right, he won 15 million quid. Yeah. He says, um, I always read my horoscope in the sun and follow the advice. Uh, basically, what Meg said was, keep a lottery ticket in a yellow mug to add luck. So you're sure. thinking, well, okay, so he's kept his ticket in a yellow mug, that's still pretty extraordinary. Yeah. Hmm. I didn't have a yellow mug, says Tom, so I put the pages of my map book, uh, so I put the ticket in the pages of my map book, which is yellow. Right. He's used, he's used mm. the yellow. No, he's used the <laughs> yeah. yellow. Yeah, no, see, I'm, I don't know much about how Mystic Meg works, I'm assuming maybe there's some kind of pseudoscience that she applies. Yeah. I think if she'd said, put it near anything yellow, fine. Yeah. She said, put it in a yellow mug, that's pretty specific. Yeah. From that, he's thought, well, I'll, I'll ignore it? Meg's advice. I always do what she says. If she's, she says put well, in yellow mug, she's, she's had two sort of like you know um, uh, points of reference there: mm. the descriptive, the yellowness of the object, yeah. and the object itself. The sure. noun should be a mug. Yeah. What's missing in the yellow book is the mugness. The mugness. It's, it's one it's of the got, It's got elements. lots of bookness, but yeah. it wasn't the bookness that gave him the <laughs> exactly. Million. So exactly, uh, I reckon. I reckon. Mystic Meg won me seven and a half million. Right. Would have been a more <laughs> right. accurate. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. What, Carl? Do you think that that's pretty spooky? And weird, unnatural stuff. So, I'm just a bit livid today. I wasn't really listening to what you were saying. Not paying attention. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Do you so, want to notify so, us before? Yeah. You know, we so ask you, you, are, you are giving to us. As, go on. What, no, what? It would have just been nice if you would have like warned me you were going to ask me about it. I'm just just a bit right. livid. Go I'm on. Just, what about? Just. just have I, I done something? Talk about. No, no, not you two. Just, just a bit livid. Uh, XFM 104.9. <laughs> Stand clear. Adam F, MOP. Mm. We all know who's dad Adam F is. Who was no. it? No. We all know who's Adam F's dad of. We all of no dads. Do we? Rick, can you keep it, keep filling? Because I've realised I've left my mobile phone on and the kind of calls I'm going to be getting on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, I'll just keep... Yeah, no, just no, keep no, no, it's with. just... Oh, that was Adam F and MOP. Stand clear. We all know Adam F's got a dad. Oh, done it again. Do you remember the trivia quiz? I forgot it. Whose dad is Adam F? Elvin Stardust. Yes, Shane Fenton, that's what the F must be for. You're back. That's done. Yeah. Yeah, we wouldn't want to be, oh, oh all, all the people that are call. calling you all the time. <laughs> all the ladies. Oh, God. Anyway, XFM 104.9. We're going to start now, um... we're going to start now. This is proper radio from now. Go. <laughs> Go. Oh, there's a lot of pressure on me now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to muck it up. <laughs> um, now, uh, Rick, I know you're a big trivia fan, I know you're mm. obsessed with trivia. And I thought Love to myself, it. well, how can I entertain Rick on Saturday? Go on. So I was uh, wandering around on the web looking for, um, uh, Trivia, basically, that yeah. could entertain you. Yeah. And you're a big animal trivia. I love you? animal facts. There's not much that you don't know about animals. Oh. But here's uh, you're something. You're going to me out now, aren't you? No, well, I don't know. Um, here's one. I don't know if you've heard this one before. Ants yeah. never sleep. No, I know. Yeah. Who oh, I know. And, 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 to say and they've got alcohol in their blood, so they don't freeze and winter. And that's why you never see a lazy ant. It's always working. Mm. It's drunk, mm. but it's always well, they, working. They never sleep, but they do take a lot of fag breaks. Yeah, I know, yeah. I think it's because they can't sleep, because it's like noisy neighbours. There's mm. about a million of them yeah, living like sometimes them. in a room. Mm. And they just, it must be very... But you see them, you see them carrying a leaf and they see someone else and they go, do you want a hand with that? And they go, don't be silly, you're carrying some eight times your body weight as it is. Mm. He goes, well, you know, I've got another pair of hands free. Yeah. Give you a hand. Yeah, yeah they're great no, They're hands. incredible. They're incredible. Yeah, I knew that one next. Um, okay, well, right, this is uh, this is one I'm throwing right at you as well, Carl. Uh, there's only one bird 
that has a penis. It's, not, it's not a joke. It's no, not it's, a, not a joke. Not it's not a joke. It's not a joke. This okay. is a genuine trivia question. I'd say... Oh. i say... I think I've seen one on this. Uh, is it an ostrich? Right, you're going for ostrich, Carl? I'll go for ostrich as well. Right. <laughs> Did you come up with that yourself, or...? Yeah, I was <laughs> okay. gonna say that before right. you said it. Well, uh, guys, you went for ostrich. Chicken? You're both wrong. It's actually the swan. It, uh, the large the chicken. <laughs> yeah. What? Have you, mm. That's a bit worrying then, because I thought I saw an ostrich penis. So what was I looking at? I don't know. Were you just examining it closely at the zoo? What? Were no, you? I just, I was just. It's probably a strap on. It was probably two leather ostriches giving yeah. each other one. <laughs> exactly. And I just, and that, that's, that's how that can influence people. Things like that. Dirty, filthy leather <laughs> ostriches can confuse a child if I he's know. at the zoo and he doesn't know. A swan's got. That's, that's really annoying. I'd like, oh, never give a swan a knob. Mm. It's, a little, the, it's the little puffiest of it all is birds. It's the puffiest of all birds. Isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I'm protected by the Queen, mm. I, but I need a knob. I'd give, if I had to give a knob to any bird, um... <laughs> Good question. No, I no. I, no, I wish I'd pose that myself. If the, you could give a, no, a, a knob <laughs> to any bird, what would it be? Phone in. Oh, vulture. Of, oh, of course a vulture. That, yeah. They need a, a, a big vein yeah. bank thing. Yeah. What about yeah. yourself, Carl? If you could give a knob to any bird? And don't make it rude, or if I could give a knob to any bird, what I'd make it What bird do you see suit up? Um, it's got to be a bird of prey or something like that, hasn't it? Cool. It's the robin, really. <laughs> that would be amazing. Just, yeah, that would be Christmas huge. cards would be like. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, but, the, really but it's, it's a normal human sized yeah, knob exactly. on a robin. That would be, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be great, wouldn't it? And genius. the other thing annoying about this, this is this is ironic, right? Now, all the male of all bird species are usually they're called a cock. Yes. Right. But the only bird with a cock, yeah, right, is called a cob. Is that what a swan's called? Yeah, they're cob and pen. They're not cock and hen. That's annoying. And he's got a. They've. He isn't a cock, but he's got a cock. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Quick query there, Rick. Go on. When you said then cock, yeah. presumably you meant male bird yeah. the first time you said it. Yeah. The second time you said it, you said cock. Did yeah. you mean the, the penis? Well, you're showing off the whole farce of radio broadcasting. Because you're not really allowed to say cock. No, exactly. No. One cock would be, cause great offence. Yeah. The other cock's fine. <laughs> exactly. It's weird, isn't it? It is strange. It is strange. So, I mean, if we said, if I said now to you, you know, um, oh, I like cocks. Yeah. Meaning birds. Yeah, that's that'd fine. Be fine. Yeah. But if I meant penises, it would be a problem. If you like cocks and it was pen... Yeah, yeah, right. yeah that would be... Carl, yeah. do you like cocks? <laughs> do you like cocks? No. Right, okay, that's fine, that's fine. I was asking if you like... No, I like, I, I like, you know... Yeah. I well, like I mean, I, I'm a big fan of, um, tits. The small birds the that small come bird. down and peck at you. Yeah. Yeah, you like tits yeah. and cocks. There's nothing... <laughs> tits and cocks. There's nothing wrong with... There's nothing... Carl, don't worry. There's nothing wrong no, with saying tits and I cocks. No, because when I said tits, I meant the little birds. Yeah, when I said down. cocks, I mean the little... The, yeah. the big birds. Yeah. Do you know, when, um... <laughs> go on, no, go on. <laughs> no, um, it's just that... It's when you're talking about tits. Yeah. Um, you know, at the milk. Do, uh, do you... They, they, they... I like the fact they flutter away when they hear the milkman coming. Oh, well, come on. So when... What? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? No, when the milkman's coming, when he's walking up the road. Ash, and sometimes, lovely song. Got to apologise to our producer there, because he was worried about... It was bit, there was nothing wrong with it. It's just like saying, you what you know, you like watching birds in the yeah, garden. It's just like, I think you're better than that. I know it's cheap, isn't it, to say like, we like yeah, tits. I like tits. Yeah, I like cocks. So are we a bit more literary now. One of my favourite things is Fanny by Gaslight. Really? That's yeah. interesting. That's interesting. I'm a big fan of Moby Dick. Oh, the oh yeah, the book Moby yeah, Dick. Yeah, 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 not the medical condition. There's no, nothing no, 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 in the no no, 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 no. It's the big horrible thing that used to swallow semen. Yeah. Now I. In the winter, yeah, Steve. Go on. There's nothing I like more than yeah. to keep my hands warm, in a muff. <laughs> no, sure, sure, sure. You mean those kind of furry things that sort of classy-looking ladies? Yeah, posh ladies on. often <laughs> put their hands. <laughs> yeah, you, know, uh, you know when you go <laughs> have a nice like a party and they're nice leaving. Party, yeah, a winter they, party. And you might take the wrong hat or something. There's nothing I like more than to see two posh women with their hands in each other's muffs. Oh, that's always a And they're going, oh, this must be yours. Yeah, that is, is it, always funny. Yeah. That's always yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, seriously, no, no, I'll start this, you're right, I've got a degree my, of, I think, I, I just, I just remembered that my favourite Beatles song is Come Together. Yeah. Now, we're gonna stop this now, Carl, because it's childish. Uh, I, 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 you're right, I've got a philosophy degree, for yeah. Christ's sake, and it's, it's about time. Who's your favourite philosopher? Do you mind me asking? Well, I would tell you, except when I ever talk about it, I go into a Cockney accent. Really? So it can be like, my favourite philosopher, I like a bit of Kant. Right. Is that Immanuel Kant, yeah. the philosopher? Yeah. That's strange. Yeah. That's strange. What's his name again? Kant. Oh, yeah. 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 That can be weird. It can be strange. Look at Carl's oh, look face. Look at his face. Look at his face. Join oh. in, Carl. 
Oh, undo your trousers. Just we'd be like Stan Boardman when he out. told the Fokker joke. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we won't do local radio again <laughs> for ten years. Ian Brown, dolphins were monkeys. Yep. For that. I don't know what that was. Um, I'm still pissed off that swans have got cocks. Yeah. It's a waste. It's a waste of a knob with a I swan. They don't know what they're doing with it half the time. Um, now we've got some great. Do you remember? We're, we're stopped with the silly innuendos now. But do you remember? I think it's because they've got a long neck <laughs> and to balance them properly in the water. <laughs> a what, are what are those things that boats have underneath? A right? rudder. No. No. Yeah. You know the I mean? the, like the keels. Yeah. The big. Maybe. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It might be. He <laughs> might be right. Yeah. Balance. What about? It. But ducks would need one as well, wouldn't they? <laughs> ducks don't. Because no, they've got short necks. Oh, I see what you mean. It's the necks. Yeah. So hold on. So do you think that's so long necks, long knob? Don't look at me, Javis. That's Steve. I know. <laughs> no. Sandy tosfeg has got a tiny cock, hasn't she? <laughs> but she has got one, which is interesting. <laughs> That's libelous. Yeah. I just like to say now that Sandy Tosfeg has never had a knob. No, she's not. <laughs> but you're not lying about the neck. No, she's got a little yeah, neck. A That's little fine. Neck. That's 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 clear for all to see. I just remember um, a, a bloke I saw on uh, Opportunity Knocks once. Opportunity Knocks. Yeah, it was a pianist. Who, well, it's true, and his name was Wayne King. Mm. I, do you like Wayne King? Carl, what's your opinion on Wayne King? <laughs> I don't know his work. <laughs> you're not, you're not, you're not a fan of his work. <laughs> okay, no, no, that's fine. Carl, we asked your opinion, mate, and you've given it, and that's all we can ask for. Oh, uh, no opinion on Wayne King. If at you, all. if you're a fan of Wayne King at home, please get in touch. The email address uh, I had: Ricky at xfm.co.uk. What was the number again? Oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. You know, if you like Wayne King, or if you know. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're asking someone's music opinion. It's a music station. What? Oh, you're you're going to be like this all day. <laughs> <laughs> if we, let's if talk we... about you and your girlfriends again. I think people enjoy that more. Oh! oh. Wow. I you think... are grumpy. Why are you grumpy? You're all grumpy because you've been loaded. Come on, tell us. Come I on. Think, I think I've got SAD. What's that mean? That thing when it's Shard day. <clears throat> Go on. When it's dark outside and you feel depressed. Oh yeah. I think I've got that. But you're from Manchester, aren't you? Isn't it like pitch black there all the time? <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it like what, which country is it? Is it Iceland? Where it's like it's like dark yeah. all year. The land of the mole yeah. people. No, yeah. I was telling Steve before. In fact, I'm not going to bore you with it. Go on. What, what were we saying about? Wayne well, you bored King? me with it earlier. Can't you bore him with yeah, it? Yeah, it's only fair. What were we saying about wh what? Wayne King. <laughs> Did you oh, see Carl, play a record. Oh, that's it's a disgusting, disgusting. Carl. You're a pervert. Yeah, yeah. Rock. That's what we're doing, Steve. We are indeed. For that Weezer Island in the Sun. Can I just ask Carl a quick question? Yeah, why does he swear so much on radio? No, 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 no. no. Carl, did you see that film last night? Gaylord Say No? Mm, yes. Oh. What were you watching that for? Yeah. Weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You, you, you're always going to lose with that one. <laughs> Rick, did you see that film last night? Gaylord Say No? No. Ooh. Oh no! Yeah, you're a gay lord. Oh. That is actually the official way of finding out if someone's gay. That's how Oscar Wilde got caught. That's exactly how he got caught. Yeah, they went. Yeah. Well, we got no evidence. The arms are anyway. Well, cheers, my lad. Oh, before you go, uh, Oscar, see that film last night? Gay lord say no. No, no. Take him away. Yeah. Take him to that bender downstairs. Take him out of my sight. That is how they got him. That's yeah. The official way. Yeah. Children in need last night, Rick. Oh. <laughs> I, I was watched a bit of it. Did you watch any of it, Carl? I was it's awful. It, it is pretty it? bad. It's the worst thing ever. I mean, it just. I've said this before. The thing about Criminal Need, it makes the whole country and BBC One for one day into just one big school fate. Yeah. Do exactly. you know what I mean? It's so pathetic. The entertainment is ill thought out. It's just. It's just boring. I'd prefer it if they just made everyone pay a pound. That'd be fine. Yeah. And they make more money, and we won't have to sit through it. Just add it to the license. But fee. surely that's yeah, exactly. Surely that's just a taxation that we should, you know. But that's as fine. opposed to going through this nonsense of seeing people <clears throat> from West End musicals who aren't selling come out mm. and yes. do a song. Mm. Yeah, of course. God. But it's just that they may as well because I know there was Terry Wogan at one point going around the audience with a bucket, just rallying it, getting all the members of the audience to put loose change in a bucket. <laughs> oh, this is national television. Yeah. And I'm watching. They've already had to sit through three hours of rubbish. Now is you're making them pay for it. Does he get paid? 
I, I don't know if he's done it for charity. I know, you know, there's a lot of people who go on there, though. All the pop acts that go on there, they're all plugging a new single. Of course, but that's... Every, it's like, well, it's, it's this mask of sort of, this charade of charity, but they're all plugging a single. Yeah. yeah. It's just pathetic. It's utterly... They may as well bring on a big Tom Pola, you know, and guess how many kind of pennies are in the jar. How did Pudsy lose his eye as well? Well, you get another one out if you're not careful. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I, I was watching, I watched it quite late, because we just had it on in the corner, we watched it chatting and stuff. And, um... About one o'clock in the morning, okay, they, they'd been promising this for ages. It was a couple of sort of Hollyoaks stars or something, yeah. or male male stars, were going to be part of a male stripper, striptease, yeah, you know, I, a full I, Monty type I, thing. I, I turned that off. Yeah. I didn't want to watch that, Steve. Uh, it's how, do you notice the way he said they'd been promising it for ages? It was yeah. like one in the morning. Almost Carl's like he got, staying up. Yes, well, Carl's you've got, got a measure you. of me, Carl. <laughs> That's a bit weird, Steve. Yeah, yeah. Did you see that film last night, Gail or Tina? <laughs> <laughs> no, but the point was, like, the thing about the, um... <laughs> are you a Gaylord tape tied to a tree? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you are, then. There you are. Oh, that's Don't you? Piece of Don't um, you? really on me. But no, seriously, so they bring on these, uh, this, this, this male stripper kind of gang, come on, like, you know, firemen or whatever, and they come on, and they like, cut to the audience, and there was one woman just putting her glasses on. <laughs> like, about a four-year-old woman. It was like, it was one in the morning, she'd fallen asleep, and her friend must have gone, Agnes, Agnes, quick, Here put your glasses is. on, wake up, they're getting yeah. their cocks out, You're and I mean cocks. Yeah, and yeah. They, they they did this strip tease, right? They did this strip tease, and I have to swear, right? They went right down to their um their underwear. They had these kind of, and they were just flashing their arses. They just, it was, uh, and I was thinking, this is for kiddies, and it was obscene. It was utterly obscene. Not I was one in the appalled. morning. It's not. It, what are you talking about? It was appalling. It's the charity like, is. No, but it was just, it was, it was offensive. I was offended by it. It was the BBC, it was charity, and there were blokes with their todgers almost out. <laughs> yeah, but the fact is, yeah, but it's post-watershed. You can have any event and give it to anything, no, can't you? No, that's not right. It's for children. Because a lot of children will stay up and watch that. Their parents will go, yeah, it's fine, you know, you can stay up and watch children in need. That's for kids. Yeah, but then yeah. arses aren't, you know. It was, but it wasn't just arses. They gave the impression they were fully nude. I mean, thankfully, they weren't. I made a close inspection, but <laughs> it was it's obscene. Hey, yeah, me and Carl, Carl's, me and Carl are looking at each other. Yeah, you're looking at each other. <laughs> gaz gaz gazing into each other's <laughs> eyes. Is, this, this, yeah, just for one week only, we're back at school, okay? <laughs> There's innuendos. We laugh when we say the word bender, cock, uh, tits meaning birds. Carl and Ricky sitting in a tree. <laughs> K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Rick, have you been enjoying Bubba Sparks' current hit, Ugly, You're Ugly, Oh, I'm Ugly, Ugly. A song which means nothing to me, actually. I can't relate to it at all. <laughs> you I have, yeah. I have, what do yeah, you make yeah. of Bubba? I like Bubba. He's a, a sort of down south I, kind of rapper. I know where this is going. I bet you've got a little bit of Bubba in your hip-hop challenge. Oh, 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 well, we did have the hip-hop challenge a couple of weeks ago, but I lost. So basically, we're just playing a favourite hip-hop track of yeah. ours, aren't we, each yeah. week? And this is my selection. It's from Bubba's current album. It's not the, the hit, uh, Ugly. It's uh, The album's actually called Dark Days, Bright Nights, and I believe this song, presumably, comes from that title, because it's called Dark Days, Bright Nights. Enjoy it, Rick. I will. Bubba Sparks, Dark Days, Bright Nights, title track of his current album. Rick, what do you make of it? I love it. Do you enjoy it's it? It's great. It's hypnotic. It's, oh, the chorus, is that, a, is that sounds like Stevie Wonder. It or does sound like Steve. I don't know. I, I haven't got the uh, inlay sleeve to hand. I can't tell you. Does anyone know? Maybe they could call in. Rick, uh, I'd love to give out the number. In fact, I will. 08700 <laughs> 800 1234. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Who is uh, providing the chorus for Bubba Sparks' Dark Days, Bright Nights, 104.9 XFM. Wow, from Bubba Sparks to Sparky Bubs. Those Sparky Bub boys swayed. <laughs> hey, oh. slick. Strokes, last night on XFM, 104.9 before that swayed. Absolutely. Beautiful ones. Fella just phoned up and said you were talking about waterfowl before. Um, the, 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 yeah, the only bird with a penis is the swan. Mm -hmm. And he said that it, it was worried him about the uh, the ugly duckling. They'll go about, oh, he turned into a um, swan, but ducklings, they're not called um, ducklings, they're called cygnets. I pointed out that the, 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 the swan in question didn't understand because right. he thought he was a, a an duckling yeah. and that, that all the other ducks sort of laughed at him because he was all gangly and everything but they turned into one and he realised oh, I was a swan all along yeah See? the ugly duckling story got me through so many bleak nights as a child <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't wait to, to one day turn into a swan still waiting for it so you can have a knob so you can have a yeah cool. yeah because uh, so uh, <laughs> look Carl look don't worry it's a nice little no one's going to complain about this it's this lovely it's kids childish stuff. lovely little innuendo there's nothing nasty or vicious there's no and anyway hate. off air you're a different kettle of fish you were yeah. trying to get us with the Gaylord joke yes he was and he tried to do this this is we'd we done the Gaylord did you see that film last night Gaylord's now Carl trying to get his own back went did you watch Gaylord's last night 
Brilliant. It's got to be, did you see that film last night, Gay Lord Say No? And then you say no and we all point and laugh. Oh, is it, I was going to ask you, is it, is it true he's leaving Friday? <laughs> Robinson Crusoe. <laughs> nice one. High five for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he got you right. He got you the right one there. I don't know what that means, but he did. Anyway. Yeah. Um, we're talking about children in need, right? Really. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, um... Carl, what's wrong He's just there? got it. He's just got it. He's just Go on. <laughs> yeah. We talked about children in need earlier, and uh, as I say, I'm not a fan of it. And I, this is a couple of years ago, I was working, um, and we had to drive up to, uh, to Blackpool. Oh, yeah. And so, we, it was Comet Relief Night, it was a Friday night, and we were listening to all the different kind of BBC radio stations, so they all cover Comet Relief, they all sort of link up as one big yeah. thing. Yeah. And uh, I think this was maybe like, sort of, I don't know, BBC Solly Hull or something. And uh, they, they've always got like, they've got this, this one guy in the studio doing all the DJing, and um, there's some bloke who's sort of outside the BBC with some kids and whatever else, um, kind of doing a live link-up. And the guy outside was Steve Baxter, I forget the name of the DJ inside. I love the fact you remember this man's name. Well, it's important because uh, we're listening, and the guy in the studio, he's there, and he's chatting away and he's going got a signed picture uh, signed picture here of uh, the Spice Girls that all the girls have signed that uh, so the highest bidder gets to win that and you have that and uh, um, I seem to have run out of words <laughs> he just said I seem to have run out of words and we were like listening like okay and he just went I seem to have run out of words I wonder if Steve Baxter's got any for me <laughs> And Steve Baxter's just outside, like, obviously not, not <laughs> ready, just going... Didn't have any words either. I, yeah, no words. Well, who's got all the words, then? It was wordless. I don't believe it. He's probably used up too many words in the first hour. Exactly. He just used all the words up. And he didn't want to repeat himself. Exactly. So he just thought, that, that's it. I'll... It was a hideous London. So we were, um... We were, we were enjoying that and the work of Steve Baxter. And uh, we were driving along. And then we were driving and we got stuck in this, this jam on the way up to Blackpool. And I saw this kind of white Mercedes, like, a couple of them. I thought, it looks quite swank, you know. And I'm... Uh, swank. <laughs> and I drove up. We were driving up behind it. And the number plate was something, like, I can't remember exactly, but I think it was something like Orv 1. I'm thinking, interesting, Orv 1, you know. So we're driving alongside, who is driving? No, actually, it wasn't the driver. It was, there was a guy driving it, in the front seat, asleep. Green dock. Keith Harris. Really? Keith Harris was there, Orville, as I recall, on the back seat. Oh, no. I couldn't believe it, yeah. Was he asleep, or...? <laughs> I think he was asleep. Just knackered. I didn't, I didn't see Cuddles, the crazy monkey. I suspect, he was, I imagine he would have popped up at some point, just kind no, of annoying you, the driver's uh, hair, just got, kind of you, crazy. Yeah, you've got, uh, I think Cuddles has to go in the booth. He's got to go in the booth, because he, he caused it, havoc. Yeah, and he, he, he no, knowing Cuddles, he'd put his hands over the driver's eyes, exactly, knocking around. Exactly, all kinds of trouble. But the, the thing is, he doesn't understand road safety, to be, to be fair. <laughs> well, he's a monkey. Yeah, he's yeah. He's a monkey, and he's got and, a lisp. And not even, <laughs> not even a real one, at that. Yeah. No. You see, the thing that was about um, Orville is that, that that argument raged for years between him and Harris. And Orville's right. He can't fly. He can't fly. Yeah. So I'm worried that Harris will lull him to full sense of security. But you can fly. Yeah, and then when Harris is out, Orville will climb onto a chair, onto a windowsill, basically think he can fly and just plummet yeah. to his death. Think, just a quick point about Orville. I'm surprised he's still not potty trained. <laughs> Because he's been, he's been wearing that nappy of his for years. I know. Because he can talk, he's mastered the power of it, speech. Yeah, yeah. Still crapping everywhere, I assume. I assume so. Flying around, yeah. terrible mess. And as we definitely know, as, he's a duck, so he hasn't got a cock. He has not got a penis. Penis, <laughs> sorry. Uh, that was a mistake there, I did say cock. Did penis. you mean penis, though? Yeah. You shouldn't have said that, Rick. I'm really sorry. You should have sorry. pretended you meant bird. Oh, I'm really sorry. Oh, we're gonna put, your, off, put your fingers in your mouth like this, Carl. Right? Uh, put it apart like that. Put right. that. Right. Now just say bucket and spade. No, with your no, fingers in your put mouth. put your fingers like that and just say bucket and spade. Bucket and spade. No, no don't no, do that. No, keep your fingers in your mouth when you say it. Fuck it. Oh, Carl, oh, play that's record. outrageous, Carl. Smashing Pumpkins, Untitled Mix FM, 104.9. I just got to tell you something, Steve. Remember, um, uh, at my birthday party, uh, my girlfriend had bought me one of those, um, uh, arcade games. You put money in a pub. Oh, it's a quiz machine, though. Quiz machine, yeah. Touch the screen, and we're all playing. But Steve, with his general uh, film knowledge, w people were getting like a hundred thousand points and getting through. Right, Steve got something like eight million. Right, listen, I got the top score on a movie trivia quiz game. Right, yeah. who's the geek now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Carl. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> no, but it was impossible. And I, I tried it, and I uh, for like months after that, I just thought I've just got to knock him off the top. And I did it all the, all the other categories, and I was best at rock. I was best at rock. Let's uh, let's say that. But by no means is you know the the gap between a, a friend of mine and a friend of yours, Johnny Candon, the lovely Irish comedian, came round last night. Yeah. Had a couple of goes. He got something like thirty million. That's mental. 
He was That's just, madness. Yeah. In fact, he's you're right, because um, Johnny bought this comic, right? He loves Doctor Who, and he bought this comic, and Steve, he left it there, and Steve I got a post now, and on every page wrote Geek. Yeah. Johnny gets it home, reads this, reads it on the tube, and there's Geek written everywhere on every page. That's the sort of vicious man Steve is. He can hand it out. Do you know what I mean? Imagine him calling you a geek. What could that? What must that feel like to be called a geek by Steve Merchant? What do you think, Carl? Every week he has a go at me. Anyway, what are you yeah. talking about? A go at you? You're so having a go at me for every the last week. Three weeks. <laughs> what? You've been having a go at me. I have not had a go. You've always no, had a go at me. You've always said to me, "What do I look like?" And what do you expect me to do? Lie. Oh, he's done you again, Steve! No, I'm not he's getting into this. He's done you again. A lad called up before and said, oh, have a go at Steve again, these looks. And it's not like a game. I'm not, like, coming in here every week and wanting to make you look, you know, come across as an ugly bloke. I don't need to do that. <laughs> he's done you what? I can't. It's he's like, done you Is this because of the Gaylord stuff? <laughs> no, it's just... you're having a go at me again? Oh. It's just that you, you had a go at me before... I didn't I have a go at you at all. I was talking to Ricky. I haven't, I haven't I, spoken a word to you. your eyes. <laughs> Is this why you're in an ugly mood? A bad mood, a generally grim mood. Is it because, like, you you just think I'm going to have a go at you? I don't know what it is. When I get here, you're all right, and then as soon as you come in here, you change. I, I haven't done anything. What are you talking about? You're paranoid. I haven't said anything, mate. I'm I've drawn a little picture it. of you here, but I've I'll not tell said you what. Anything. What we need now is a song for the lovers. Oh, I want to tell you now. Please. This has been one of my favourite songs for about twenty years. It's by David Bowie. Now, David Bowie's had his phases, and I liked his glam stuff. And I, you know, Tim Machine mm -hmm. went off. And it, it, you know, he's he's always sort of there on and off, right? But this song is off space on it, and it, it's called Letter to Hermione. And I don't know why he stopped writing songs like this because this is probably one of the most beautiful songs ever recorded. And I know Steve agrees with me on this. I do indeed. Rick, can I just kiss and make up with Carl? No, that is... No, let me just let me just kiss my kiss. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't... Next, then next week it'll be the same again. What it doesn't mean anything. It's, it's like saying on sorry. Lips. Oh, on the lips. go on. He's oh, Carl. Carl! Get off oh, it. It. <laughs> I have never... Carl has Not gone a absolute shade of purple, straining not to have merchants... There's no point, Steve. What no. There's no point. No, just shake. Just shake and make up. <laughs> <laughs> shake what, Rick? <laughs> there you go. All friends, sit down. This, that's lovely. That's a lovely moment. Uh, it's XFM 104.9, and this is Letter to Hermione by David Bowie. It's beautiful. Oh. Letter to Hermione by David Bowie. Wow. After that, I think he wrote The Laughing Gnome. I know, it's just... It, the thing about David Bowie, I feel the same way, it's that like he's clearly a great, you know, rock musician, great, you know, great fun records, you know, I saw him at Glastonbury, absolutely fantastic entertainer, but his songs have never gripped me, they never got me at heart, you know. Except that one. Except that one, that's yeah, the first one I've yeah. ever heard of his, which really got yeah, me in good. the gut. Yeah, Amazing yeah. lyrics, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Carl, what are your thoughts? It's alright. <laughs> yeah, you're a poet, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Play something else, then. <laughs> Blair. Coffee and TV. Good to hear that one again. Yes, good. For that, Radiohead, True Love Waits. Wow. Steve, it's time for my world-famous film review. People love it. Yeah. 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 How Can I just ask, before on. you crack on with the film review, I notice you often do films that people have already seen. Well, you see, that's what I mean. You, you, that's why I think your film review failed, because people didn't know what film you're talking about. They hadn't seen it. Yes. See, there was mine, I picked ones they've seen, sure. that, that, you know... That, that, that when a lot of people would say that, that the benefit of a film review was the fact that they hadn't seen it yet, so they were going to make up their mind based on I that don't know, I don't know who'd say that. I prefer Rickers. Okay. See? All right, Carl. See, there you are again, being nasty to me. No, it's just, he's got a choice. All right, anyway, so my point is that how would you hope people would use your reviews? Right? Whatever, the, however they want, okay. really. Okay. So... Would you hope that they'd maybe seen the film but they hadn't yet made up their mind? <laughs> Whether they liked it or Whether not. Whether they liked it or Well, this, this is up, again, up to them. This is, you know, this is for everyone. It's easy. So if someone say it's... Because I think, was it, you did, uh, one of your most famous ones, I think, was uh, one for the Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah. Now that came out, I think, in 1975. Yeah. So maybe some people saw it in 1975, haven't yet made up their mind as to what they thought of yeah, it. Yeah, now this is, this uh, put them straight and what sure. to look for next time, maybe. Okay. Um, I've, oh, no, ready? Ricky Gervais Film Review. Sure. Review. Right? Chosen Rain Man. Rain Man, okay. Now, this yeah. has been on TV quite a few times, and it was a multiple Oscar winner. Exactly. Okay. So, okay, right. Rain Man, it's got Tom Cruise in it, yep. and he's all right, he's normal, but he finds out he's got a brother who's a bit mad. Dustin Hoffman is doing it, right? And it's meant to be. He's all weird, but he's meant to be, so it's good acting. Now, he... Oh, God. He needs to keep his brother, but they don't want him to have a brother, and... He doesn't remember a lot, but he dropped him in the bath and burnt him when he was little. Clumsy idiot. But then he finds out he can make a bit of money, so they get the same suits, and they go, bet two for good, well, because he's got special powers. 
so he can know what the what the roulette. He wins that, and he drops some toothpicks. He knows how many there are, and he recognises the waitress. He just throw through the book. He's got all his football cards. Don't put them out of order. Don't go in the telephone box with him. He smells, and get him back in time for Jeopardy or watch it. Anyway, then he slap his head and get worried. Qantas don't crash, so he's got all that. And in the end, he doesn't. I don't think, but they at least they've met each other. Yeah, yeah. Of course, Rayman, a film about autism, which is strangely appropriate, I think, when you're reviewing it. Anyway. What would you give it out of uh, ten? Oh, nine. Okay. Thanks very much for that. Were you useful? Mm. Yeah? Have you seen the film before? No, but no. I, I, I will now. Okay, <laughs> jolly good. Well, uh, excellent. New Order. 60 miles an hour on XFM 104.9. Well, well, a quarter of an hour to go. Yep. We've still got your song for the ladies. Song for the ladies coming up. Um, time now, though, Rick, for Under the Covers. You've got me covered. Cover me bad. <laughs> uh, which is when we play a cover version of yeah. uh, a well-known hit. Just see the sort of effort that goes into the show. It's a lot of work. We've learned something. We've learned the only bird with a, um, a penis is the swan. Swan. We've had an interesting anecdote where, where he saw Orville. I saw Orville. Yeah. Keith Harrison we've Orville. Had, we've had a film review, Rain Man. Informative. Award-winning, an award-winning film I reviewed <laughs> yes, today. Yes. So <laughs> that was an Oscar winner. Carl. Ants. There's been things about ants. Ants never sleep. Yeah. If you missed the beginning, you won't know that fact. We've had various songs, music, and that. Beautiful. So carry on, Steve. Cover me up. Um, the White Stripes. Everyone's raving about them, Rich. Sure. Uh, they are an exciting band, and this is their cover of the Dolly Parton classic Jolene. Love it already. <laughs> White Stripes and their version of Jolene. What did you make of it, really? I loved it. I loved it. Good. I want to ask Carl a question, though, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Carl's sometimes in awe of this newfangled world that we live in. What, uh, what do you think of the scenario? What do you think is going on there? Because it's a bloke singing to a woman, begging her not to take his man. What, what do you think is going on there? Say again. Well, that's a bloke there, singing. Yeah, to his, to, his, uh, to his wife, Jolene. Right. Were you were you listening to the lyrics or? <laughs> you see, I, I got mixed up anyway. Mean? I thought it was about that that one about the person who chucks himself off a bridge. So I was thinking more about that than listening to that one. So right, just, listen. Well, go on it. Right, Jolene, Jolene, I'm begging of you, please don't take my man. You flaming locks of auburn hair. He's gonna, even though you can, don't. He's all I've got. You're a beautiful woman. Don't take my man because mm. I can't compete with you. Right. Yeah. What do you think is going on there though? Because you, you know it's Dolly Parton singing it. We know what's going on. They're fighting over the same man, aren't we? Yeah. What do you think is going on when a bloke singing it to Jolene? What, what, what do you think of the scenario there? That's one of them names, isn't it? That could be a bloke's name. It's like Leslie. Oh Christ! Okay, sorry. It was a. I don't. We, I wish you'd not asked him that question. <laughs> so exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Do I ants, love. Carl. Do ants sleep, Carl? <laughs> which which bird's got a cock? Swan. Swan. Okay, nice one. Listen, I want to play that song for various people who have uh, emailed and phoned in saying they want requests. We don't really play requests on the show. We'd like to mention them anyway. Uh, Matt Barr, Magic Thighs. Uh, that's not Matt Barr's Magic Thighs. No. That's Matt Barr and Magic Thighs. Yeah. Kieran in Dublin, Stuart in Hackney, Lisa and Alison in Crouch End, and Glenn in Crystal Palace, who was phoning up with a nice uh, message earlier. All of you, thanks for listening and uh, thanks for enjoying it. Sorry we didn't play your requests, but uh, tune in next time. It'll be fun. Um, anyway, I just thought I wanted to say, really. Here's Tragic. What's tragic? What, what did you want me to say about that song? Just your opinion. Your own opinion was fine. It's, it's in fact, in fact, your own opinion is better than anything I could really hope for. W without doubt. Whenever I ask you a question... You constantly surprise us. Yeah. You're, it's, it's wonderful. So only ever... Carry on telling the truth. Carry on saying exactly what's on your mind. And I think this could become a great... You're like a man who was frozen <laughs> in Victorian era <laughs> and has been reawoken and he's kind of discovering the world. Some things make sense, other things yeah. don't. It's beautiful. It's As really opposed like... to one that was made in a castle in Victorian times like Steve. <laughs> Oh, that's just... Oh, I've joined in with Carl. I can't believe it. I'm oh, sorry. On my side. Yeah, no, it was irresistible, though, wasn't it? I'm really sorry. Should we play a record? <laughs> right, I'm afraid that is about it from us. Absolutely. Um, I always leave the ladies with the song, Rick, as you know. And the song for the ladies this week, again, it comes from the free giveaway CD that comes with this excellent little magazine called Comes With A Smile. And uh, there's always something interesting. How are you I've spelling played... <laughs> I've played uh, the Mull Historical Society before. This is a track. It says it's just a demo, which is, I don't know why, if, they're sound, if they've been picked up, it's outrageous. They're called Sloan, and this is called Pretty Together. See you next time. Goodbye. <laughs> X. 
XFM 104.9. Steve, just back announce that for us. Yeah, from the album Princess Superstar Is. That was Princess Superstar, an untouchable part one. Do you enjoy it? I really enjoyed it. Good. So good. I'll tell you what, I had two of the ingredients that I look for in a record. It was both fly and dope. <laughs> High five, man. Yeah, you're, okay. sweet. you're sweet, man. Coming up, yeah. I've got my um, film review. Looking forward it's to it. It's a great one. It's a great Lovely. film. I've got a song for the lovers uh, any minute now. Sure. Uh, and, and probably loads more chat. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there will be. There will be. PJ Harvey, this is love. XFM 104.9. It's Ricky Gervais show, isn't it? With Steve Merchant. Yeah, but you're going to keep quiet now, Steve, because I've got to do my, my world famous film review. Looking forward to it. Yeah. I know you criticise it, because I you sure. say I do sort of like films that aren't on, you know, current release, or mm, that mm. I sort of just do the plot, or, you mm, know, but, mm. you know. I have think you, have you taken that criticism on board? I have. Good. This week's Ricky Gervais film review <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. is Jungle Book. The Jungle Book? Yeah. That was made in, what, 1968? I don't know, but listen, shut up, right? It's a good review, right? Right, for people who either have heard it or haven't, you know, you might learn something. Sure. Because it's sort of my take on it. Has the review be begun yet, or...? No, no. It's good, it's good uh, some, from now, yeah? Go, okay, go. Go. Right, the little kid, he's in the jungle, right, but he knows the bear and the panther, they're good friends, but it's dangerous because you've got to watch out the tiger and the snake. Now, the reason is, they don't mind him, but he's human and he can make fire, they can't. That's why he's sort of in demand, even though they've conquered the power of speech, they can't make fire, but... And then, the orangutan gets him. Now... Is in, is in trouble, but the bear puts coconuts on and makes himself look like it, then they fall off. They've got to get away, but then he meets, a, like, a, a, a girl, and it's, and then they're not, you know... <laughs> okay. Do you write these yourself, yeah. or...? You don't get a professional to do no. it? Right. Oh, no, no. Okay, okay. And what would you give that one out of five? It's nine. That's a nine out of five. <laughs> Strong review there. A strong film, then, for you. Well, again. And you'd recommend that for, for friends and family? Yeah. Okay. Just on video or DVD or in the cinema. Okay, good. All right, and, and the, the film again was? Jungle Book. Jungle Book. Jolly good. All right, thanks very much for that. Well, now it's time for a Song for the Lovers. This is the Smiths, and last night I dreamt that somebody loved me. Good. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Lo Smiths. Lovely song. Mm. Last night I dreamt somebody loved me. Beautiful. Song for the Lovers there. On XFM 104.9. Can't believe I forgot the elephants. That is, that was a key element of the review. Really? Yeah. 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 Don't let it get you down, Rick. I know right. these things depress you if you I know, you've not done the film review as best you could. <laughs> yeah. I know that kind of winds you up. Yeah. You stew about it. Um, played a beautiful song there. Uh, yeah, it was thanks. a song for the lovers. Yeah. And, uh, it, you know, I, I do get depressed when I see people around me who've got, you know, girlfriends. And right. I think, you know, because I haven't, and I just think, like, what, what, what's the rule? You know, we mentioned last week that fat bloke from, from Pop Idols. <laughs> He's got a bird, which annoys me, angers me. <laughs> and um, this really depressed me. Uh, walking into Piccadilly Circus Tube a couple of nights ago, homeless guy, wrapped up, unwashed, <laughs> and uh, northern. <laughs> and uh, he's being spoken to by some kind of carer, you know, some worker who'd come out to dish out kind of stale sandwiches. And I just overheard as I was passing him going, well, of course, it's very difficult maintaining a long-distance relationship. <laughs> <laughs> and I sort of, like, kind of lingered for a bit. I was thinking, what? And he was going, yeah. And, it, and I kind of basically I pieced together that he's got a girlfriend. He's from Leeds. He's got a girlfriend who's also homeless, who's homeless up in Leeds. And occasionally she kind of homelesses her way all the way I to London. I love the fact that he's travelled to be homeless. I know. Pathetic. Oh, it angered me that they, is there a lot, is there, is there a lot of cheap housing in Leeds? Oh, yeah. would, that, would that ruined it for him? But I, it just was. I assume maybe she was squatting or something. <laughs> but it was like, and it just depressed me because it was like, not only is he sort of is he homeless, but he's got a homeless girlfriend. But the, the homeless people are finding love. Yeah. Do you mean it's so? De I mean, that's really depressing, Carl, isn't it? Unless they both became smackers Carl, together. Or no, whatever. Carl's found love on the street before, haven't you? <laughs> How's it going with your bird, Carl? Are you oh, married? Yeah. No, no, no. How yeah. long have you been out with her? Out so, with her? Seven years. Because I mean, you're quite a simple man. Yeah. You're sort of a simple In a nice way. Ways. I mean, yeah, you're like Helen sense. from Big Brother. Yeah, you're, you're, you're sort of nice enough, but... But I look normal. Well, yeah, you sort of do. But you could be one of those that just suddenly go mental with a pen. Yeah, do you know just what I mean? people through the eyes. Yeah, yeah, you sort of look normal. But if I, I wouldn't really want to wind you up to a point of frenzy. Do you... How did you meet your girlfriend? <laughs> through work. <laughs> What, through her work? <laughs> what, you found out and said... Her work's at the same place. Oh, you're right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. You're quite an enigma, aren't you? Could you give us more on that? <laughs> at work. You met her at work. What, she came in selling sandwiches? <laughs> <laughs> she was going through the bins outside. What, what do you mean you met her Why at work? are you having an attack on me? You're I'm the one who's sat and lonely. No, I'm not 
Oh, he's done you again. He's done you yeah, again. Yeah, but what, what I thought was interesting was no. I just scratched at him and he just went mental. Yeah, no. It's like a bear caught in a trap. It's it's funny, isn't it? You'll never learn. Carl. No, I was just interested to find out what the story was because it might be a really romantic story. Well, it's, it's not. All right, jeez. I, I mean, love the fact I, he doesn't want to talk about, about his you. love I, affair. I, I was thinking about you in the week and like... <laughs> Does it worry you? I mean, you sort of joke about it now, and we're talking about it in the office, you know, like, oh, is, is Steve really touchy about the way he looks? And oh, what's this? Where's that come from? He's and done it again. He's done you again. And I was walking home the other night, and I was thinking about it. And do you worry that when you're old, you will be on your own? <laughs> you did start it, though, didn't you? Well, Carl, I'm glad you brought this up. <laughs> because No, no, because, I, I mean, for me... You know, a, a lightweight, frothy entertainment show <laughs> on XFM on a Saturday afternoon is exactly the place <laughs> where I want to discuss uh, the desperate, lonely future that's inevitably uh, coming my way. Oh, God. I'll I, I tell you what will cheer you up and forget yeah. all that. A bit of embrace. <laughs> oh, one of the most hated bands. Oh, no, no, no. Hives, main offender. Before that, embrace. Make it laugh. I know you don't like embrace much, but that's mm. a nice tune. Yeah. And they do cut a nice little chorus. Sure. And they... I think their heart's in the right place. Okay. Yeah, very nice. What, what could you do better? <laughs> I, I was mucking around. That's always it. fair. I, no, I was thinking, of, there's not enough avant-garde stuff. I just did this, right? There's a little spring on the mic. What does that sound like? Does that sound good? I haven't got my headphones on. Does that sound good? It sounds brilliant. I was thinking of doing that and just sending it to John Peel. It's maybe, good. Maybe, I think maybe with some samples of, like, politicians going, we will not... Uh, I, I feel it's more a B-side yeah. at the moment. But, okay. I mean, it's strong. I think it's, yeah, you could work that up. But that's without strings or anything, without... Yeah. <laughs> sure, that's without, you know, I mean, that's just kind of a basic demo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you've worked that up with a decent producer. Yeah. Ooh. Man alive. Still coming. We've got radio ahead. We've what got are these fellas doing? Um, there's a couple it's of... It's quite noisy. It's just distracting. Yeah. There's a couple of fellas behind us um, taking pictures. I don't know why it takes two of them. Mm. I think one of them just got, a, you know, a couple of hours out of the office. Yeah. They're from the... Uh, what are you from, X Mag? X-ray. 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 What's X-ray? It's the XFM magazine, Steve. The XFM what? Magazine. magazine. Where's that? Where, where, is this available in shops? Is it? Is it just a giveaway thing? To it's it, kind of giveaway bit of information on bands. Right. Gigs are coming. How is it available? Uh, yeah, how, yeah, who gets it? It's it's in top magazines. You're really selling it, Carl. You're obviously a fan of the magazine. It's all right. Yeah. I don't want to make it. it th this seems now like you've said. Let's pretend we don't know what it is. You sell it on air. Make it sound. I like don't it. know what it is. Well, I'll show you later. Okay, cool. And if people want a copy of it, they can go to the website and subscribe and you get it for free. That's all right. Yeah. Cool. And, and we're well, be in it. And we're going to be in it. Centre pages. I, d I, didn't, I don't look my best. As I, I don't dress for radio. Mm. And, uh, you know... Well, it's okay, because I'm photogenic. <laughs> so I'll, I'll make <laughs> up for whatever you... Uh, I'll lack. push you forward. Rick, I don't know if you were aware of this, but we have some tickets to give away. Is your favourite band Marky Smith's The Fall? It is, yeah. Go I on. thought it was. And is your favourite venue, the Kentish Town Forum? Oh, I'd see anything there. <laughs> if I'd you... see the fall anywhere, and I'd see anything there. So and if you're telling me the fall are there, we're not giving away, Steve. I'd like those for myself. Rick, I'm just trying to remember if your favourite support act of late is Schindler. Oh, no, I hate them. <laughs> I'm not going. Give them away. <laughs> okay, so the doors are at 7.30. doesn't say when it is. So I'm only is joking, tonight, Schindler. I'm right. only joking, by the way. To Schindler, the lads in Schindler, if they think I'm being a little bit nasty. It's tonight, it's 7.30, the tickets are £11.50 in advance. I'm assuming there's probably some still left, but we have some to give away. How many have we got to give away? Just three, three pairs. Three pairs, is it? Mm. Um, have you, talking of Schindler, you know the, the people that make lifts? Or I think escalators as well. Oh, yeah. If you notice, like yeah. in the bottom of a lift, it always says Schindler. It's always made by some organisation called Schindler. Do you think it's the same Schindler? Like from Schindler's List? So it's Schindler's Lifts. <laughs> Schindler's Lifts. And it was passed down wrong. No, I didn't make a list. Yeah. <laughs> have, no, I made, I made lifts. <laughs> yeah, You're I was joking. Seriously. Spielberg was going, I've made a whole film about it. was three hours, it was in black and white, for God's sake. Was it, well, where'd you get the lifts? There was no lifts in it. I thought it was a list you made. <laughs> no, I made lifts. <laughs> oh. Anyway, next time we're in the lift, check that out. That is true. Uh, anyway, we've got, yeah, we've got three tickets for the, uh, four, th sorry, three pairs of tickets for the four who are performing tonight at Kentish Town Forum. If you'd like to win them, here's a question for you. Which Radio 1 rival station, which Radio 1 personality used to be a member of the four? If you know, then you can get in touch on 08700 800 1234. Or it's ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Is it Chris Miles? I don't want to give it away. Is it John Peel? I don't want to give it away. Okay. I don't want to give it away. Okay. But two words for you. 
<laughs> Emma B. <laughs> It is indeed. We're just looking at the uh, the Polaroids, the test the photographers do. And I'm not at all happy. No, do you know what I mean? No, it's, it's like I kid myself. I must walk around. It, it, it does take mirrors and photographs. And I go, oh no, yeah, I forgot I look like that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Sort of like you look at that. Like yeah. A tree look trunk. at me, Rick. There. That's always with me. Oh, there was a bloke downstairs. Thought I was Johnny Vegas. He was going, I love those adverts with a monkey. I didn't have the nerve to say I'm not him. At one point, he actually said, I like that one when he hits you. And I went, Yeah. He went, You doing any more adverts? And I went, Yeah, I'm doing a couple more. <laughs> I just thought, God, it's gone too far now. I can't say I'm not Johnny Vegas. So I'm not really listening to it because I want to say to you, Can you get me more square on? Yeah. Square on, I'm not so bad. It's from the side. Yeah, the side looks bad. All right, come on, Rick. Really the, <laughs> yeah. We were, Carl, we, what do you make of that? Pretty face. Yeah, this isn't this isn't great radio. No, it's not. I know, I know we never do do great radio, <laughs> yeah. but this is this really certainly isn't. This is some of the worst we've done. Yeah. Um, we were talking um, uh, before about um, uh, Schindler's Lifts. Yes. Like those people just about, about one thing, mm. uh, and uh, they're famous for that. Now, do you think the Monopoly commissions should investigate Armitage Shanks? Yes. Because I've never seen... Never another seen another sink or toilet <laughs> made by anyone else. <laughs> no. Did they, when, would they, when did they take over this? Can you hear that clicking? Yeah, would you just stop just for a second while we're just just doing this? Because he can't talk, because he's trying to make himself look so handsome. Well, exactly. I've got to keep he's striking poses. He's to sort of look normal. I tell, I've just changed my mind. I want to. You know, you remember that George Michael video where he doesn't appear; he just gets supermodels to play him yeah. or kind of replace him. Can we yeah. do that maybe instead? Just yeah. get a leggy blonde in. In, That'd in, be fine. in uh, yeah, in our place, like five people. Exactly. Instead of <laughs> this is Steve. Exactly. But he looks like five women. Yeah. No, that is Steve. And so you were talking about Shanks. Yeah, Shanks. They've, Armitage, so, they've got it sewn up. They've sewn. They have, haven't they? Up. Yeah. When do they sort of like? Get I don't big? know who the Shanks people are. I don't think they make anything else though. I've never seen them making anything else other than lavatories and sinks. They seem to have got that. So, so uh, who went? We are going to make. We're going to make so many urinals that there's going to be too many urinals. No one's going to have a, a look in. When everyone, when anyone's out having a slash, they're just going to be thinking, yeah. Armitage Shanks. But presumably Shanks. there's someone called Armitage Shanks, who's Could got be. his name all over that. You know, whenever you meet him, you're just thinking, I've had a waz. On and Armitage <laughs> on, Shanks. On Armitage Shanks. Is waz a word? We can say waz, can't we? Yeah, or yeah, piss or so. slash. Yeah, either of them's fine. <laughs> oh. You two walk on. See, I like you two again now. I yeah. liked him sort of, you know, in the very early days. Mm -hmm. And I hated him for about 15 years. And then the last album, this, and Beautiful Day, I think really good. Thanks uh, for they've, that. they've lost all their pomposity, don't you think? I, th I saw I one think of them saying that the, he felt this was the best album they've ever made. I, I tell you what, I'm not going to argue with them, whoever it was, Steve. <laughs> Could well have been The Edge, not sure. Could have been Larry Mullen. Real name, David Evans. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Rick, you may recall that some time ago we gave people the opportunity to win some tickets for the fall performing live at the Kentish Town Forum this evening. Supported by Schindler. Schindler. I know you're a big fan of them. And uh, we have some winners. I could have made more lifts. <laughs> the question I set was, which Radio 1 personality used to be a member of The Fall? We did have some wrong answers. Uh, wrong answers included <laughs> Gary Davis. No, oh, I imagine him in The Fall. Uh, oh, that is brilliant. Noel Edmonds. <laughs> and, of course, uh, Ed Stupot Stewart. Oh, what's Not happened to Noel Edmonds? What's happened to lovely Nolly? No, <laughs> Noel's just utterly doomed, isn't he? No one will employ him now, it seems. W well, we don't know that. That's probably libelous. How is that libelous? Well, he might he might be turning down stuff and therefore might be sort of waiting for a big comeback with Noel's house party 2002 oh, for so, you no, now. No, you're right, it is libelous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks for pointing that out, Rick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Already Laura's thinking, that's not libelous. No, actually, good point. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so the winners are Minna, who's <laughs> from Finland, apparently, according to uh, these notes here. Uh, Minna. What, what, has won. Why is that funny? Well, how would she have called him from Finland? Well, no. When someone says where are you from, you, she might have been here for like a year. I go, well, Finland. Well, I embarrassed myself. Sorry yeah. about that, Rick. Thanks for tearing me apart. That was fascinating radio. <laughs> uh, Vinny's also <laughs> one. He's from Surrey. Oh, oh, imagine, imagine coming from Surrey. And uh, Tom Prince from Canada. What a great name. Tom Prince. They're all the lucky winners. I think we've lost it. Mm. No, I was really good the first few weeks. Thought, yeah, and even the first hour. But this last 20 minutes, I feel that I've bored myself. Yeah. What's happened? I think it's because you keep picking me up on every single thing I say. It can't help, surely. I'm and then if it's not you, it's Carl having a go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's more going for your looks. I'm more working on your personality. Right, sure. But together... So it's my fault now that the show's 
go no, but it's like you know we're sort of like your mentors. You've got to be harsh. It's like you're like Eliza Doolittle, <laughs> and we've got our, we've got lots of little stylists in, like they do with like you know makeovers and that, all that yeah. faking it. They get in like me and Carl. Carl's working on your looks. I'm doing your personality. We're gonna get like stylists in and you know coaches, and then you have to do a date. And the woman has to, and there's three other blokes, and she has to w work out what the freak. Yeah. amongst them is, and you've got to go, no one voted for you as the freak. Yeah, Rick, I've known you for three years. I don't think you're counting for that job. <laughs> <laughs> Groove Armada, Superstar on XFM 104.9. Mm -hmm. It's nearly the end of the show, Steve. It is. I'm going to try harder next week. Yeah. I mean, it started off well, and then I, I, I didn't get bored. I just didn't... I, couldn't concentrate. I know what you mean, I know what you mean. I mean, I thought I tried hard early on with the anecdotes that yeah. embarrassed me and which Carl just used as uh, Well, I had, I had the funny, the funny bullshit t-shirt I had. And sure. The, and the, you know... I had the woman, you know, walking around in my clumpy I shoes. I had the washing with me. Oh, they were shirts. classic anecdotes, Rick. Oh, I love the first hour. <laughs> I love the first hour. There should definitely be a, a, a sort of show on Saturday evenings yeah. on XFM with Kate, Kate Thornton, Thornton and uh, Richard Blackwood. Blackwood would be good. Moyles in, going... Just remember oh, the first happened. hour, they used to... Oh, it'd be great wouldn't it that'd be lovely oh it'd be lovely. amazing there's people taking our photographs which i'm not happy with no, i'll I'm be honest happy. i'm gonna have someone fired. I know you've, i'm only joking he stopped i was only, I was only joking oh, i've offended someone which i don't like to do and then we all the stuff about um i'm worried lift, though, go I'm, on. I'm worried because i didn't know that the photos were going to be taken <laughs> yeah that we won't seem quite as hip and down with the kids as we thought we would on account of wearing these tuxedos i'm telling you now that is ironic we are down by law this next uh, track is Ice Cube. It was a good day. It's uh, my selection for the hip hop track. Yeah, as yeah. you know, we we, we want to spread the word of. Um, a lot of people don't seem to realise that hip hop is music as well, and it's out there, and it should be enjoyed by kids. And it's at the moment, it's kind of quite an eclectic thing. You know, it's very yeah. underground. Yeah, we're trying yeah. to bring it into the mainstream. Yeah, and uh, in this, you know. Cube says it was a good day, you know. Simple things like he didn't use his AK. That's the sort of world he lives in. That's what he's trying to get across. And it talks to you about your life. Sure. Yeah, respect it. Well, there you go. Ice Cube, it was a good day. Great song. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've got a great song coming up as well. I have indeed. It's the song for the ladies, Rick. We'll leave people with that. Uh, have you seen the film Magnolia? I have. It's one of the most underrated movies. It didn't get a single Oscar nomination. It's absolutely fantastic. Breathtaking cinema. Yeah, it's Made fantastic. by the guy that made Boogie Nights. Absolutely fantastic. Tom Cruise is in it, loads of people. And the soundtrack is uh, entirely written by uh, Amy Mann. Mm. Now, I don't know if she's normally the sort of person they play on XFM, but she's a singer-songwriter of great skill, I think. Yeah. And this is a song that features in one of the most breathtaking moments it's in the film. It's amazing. when they Incredible all Yeah, it all brings it together. It is, you know, I don't uh, we won't come across, obviously. Uh, no, here, but, but it's, nevertheless, it's a, a good song. song. It's called Wise Up. We'll be playing that in a second. But otherwise, Rick, that's it, isn't it? That is it. Could, uh, what will you be doing tonight, what Steve? What are we doing tonight, Rick? Um, probably going to be oh, staying in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, what, what, yeah. What, and doing what, Oh, though? uh, watching some telly. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. That's not all I know you. Did I see a couple of cans of wheat lager in your carrier bag? I did sneak them in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to drink them both tonight, are you? What are you, my mother? Okay, chill out, <laughs> oh. do what you want. Oh. Will you be sleeping alone again? If I play my cards oh. right. <laughs> Will you be having a little tug just I'm to get yourself be, up to sleep? I'll probably have a couple. Couple okay. of tugs. Is there something saucy on Channel 5, I will. <laughs> XFM 104.9. Here's Wise Up. Amy Mann, enjoy it. <laughs>